I, I preach rhythms. I try to get my clients to do it in their personal life. Because if you're able to do it in your personal life, life is easier to duplicate it over to your business. So I preach rhythms and, you know, making sure that life kind of like you just you just get into the, the flow of things. You get these processes that you're going to have to do for your clients and stuff in a in a rhythm, in a normal routine. So that that way, when you need to turn your attention to your client, your client, like your client now has the 100 percent best you and you're putting your best foot forward. Hey, mamas, welcome to the More Than a Mother podcast, where we believe you can pursue your dreams and be a great mother at the same time. I am your host, LaJuan Moses, and I am helping you find the freedom to live. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey friends, welcome back to the More Than a Mother podcast. This is your host, LaJuan Moses, and I'm back with you again for another great episode. If this is your first time listening at More Than a Mother podcast, we are helping moms to create a life outside of motherhood without sacrificing their family time. We believe that moms can pursue their dreams and be great moms at the same time. My guest today is operations and growth strategist, Ray Burrell of Ray of Light Concepts. Ray is a mother and wife and business owner who joined me today to share her journey from quitting her corporate job to going into full-time entrepreneurship. Ray shined a different light on things and shared how you don't always have to dislike or hate your full-time job to want to venture off to do something different. Ray opened up about her journey as an entrepreneur, her journey as a mother, and just how she is conquering each day and making the most of each moment. Ray talks to us about the importance of finding peace and working towards having rhythm in your life. Let's take a listen to my interview with Ray. Hey, Ray, how are you? I'm doing good. How about you? Wonderful. Welcome to the More Than a Mother show. I am so happy to have you here today as my guest. I'm excited to be here. I've been watching you on social media and watching your show, and I am very honored that you have me. Oh, thank you so much. So again, welcome to the show. If you could just take a moment and introduce yourself to the More Than a Mother audience. My name is Ray Burrell. I am an operations and growth strategist. I teach people the skill of learning how to strategize and plan for growth so that that way they can always go back through there. I do that by actually walking them through a specific service or something that they're trying to build out and teach them the ways to properly strategize and think about your operations and all that jazz for their business. That is awesome. I can't wait to hear more about what you're doing to help people operate and grow within their business. But before we get into all that, as you know, at More Than a Mother, we believe that moms can pursue their dreams and be great moms at the same time. Also, we are big on storytelling because I believe that when you share your stories with others, you serve as a portal of empowerment to help lift others up and just help them to make it along their journey. So Mm -hmm. if you could just share what your aha moment was or what that transformational moment was for you that led you on the path that you're on today. I actually started to realize a aha moment when I worked at a home developer business. I was working in corporate America. I had worked in healthcare and other industries in the past. I finally was in corporate America, had a boss who was the bomb diggy. I had coworkers who I absolutely loved. Like there wasn't any tension and it was finally like, oh, this is great. So I had been on my spirituality you know, trying to get back in touch with God. I had just recently gotten married. I think we were two deep, two years deep by then. And I came to a point where I wanted to do nothing more than work for God and do what he wanted me to do. And I was tired of really answering to the man. So I started to pray about it and I started to do some research to figure out, okay, well, if I was to leave my job, what would I do? And it came down to, well, maybe there's like this virtual assistant stuff. We'll look at that. In the middle of me doing all of that, I was led to quit my job. And I'm like, you mean like right now though? And so everything pointed to yes. And I had started this, 
I had started this venture. I was praying about it and I was one like kind of worried because it was it was at a time where I was working for a temp agency prior and then they had just bought my contract out. Like I hadn't been there. We hadn't I hadn't been there officially on the staff for six months yet. So I was like, I mean, like this isn't the guy that I know. Like I wouldn't put them in a situation where they just they just paid out my contract so they can bring me on and then like now they have to deal with that and you know it just didn't feel right so that led me to walking into my boss's office and basically quitting but telling him to take his time (laughs) So, (laughs) so it was like I mean I'm I'm caught off guard you're caught off guard we are all caught off guard but here's where we are and you know I at the end of the day I'm in a place in my life where I'm going to do what he asked me to do with with very little questions so after I spoke with my husband and you know my boss we started going that rail fast forward three months later is when I actually started my business that's awesome and I just think it's amazing how when we have that spiritual connection and we're in touch and we seek God's help for things, how when he gives us the answers, we're always like, wait a minute, right now? Or we just kind (laughs) of question it because we may see it happening one way, but then I find it funny how God sees things happening in a different way. Yeah. So my boss was actually really, really surprised that through the three months, I didn't, I didn't rush him. I didn't, I didn't say, Hey, you know, I got to go. I'm on a timeline. Like I legit meant like find the right person and I will stay and train them as long as you need me to. So he only ended up hiring someone because his boss finally was like, all right, sir, you got to bring. Right. I'm sure he was trying to do everything that he could to keep you there as long as possible. Yeah. I really loved that job. And my boss was awesome. Like he was, he was a real cool boss. I could walk in and tell him, Hey, so I'm just not feeling it today. Go home. I just need to go home. (laughs) And he'd be like, cool. Like turn in your stuff, like get get done what you got to and see you later. Right. Yeah. And I mean, and there are a lot of people that are in situations where they do love their job, but as you spoke that you just had this other calling that it was something more that you wanted to do. You had your conversation with God. So, I mean, even in pointing that out, because we hear so many different stories from people that are miserable at work, they don't like their jobs, they don't like their boss, but we're hearing from you now who are saying that, yes, I love my job. I love my boss. I love what I was doing, but I still wanted more. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right just it just wasn't wasn't it wasn't challenging enough either I kept feeling like there's there's more to it so it wasn't a challenge that's about the only the only thing that I wasn't happy with at the time I I wasn't feeling challenged and I was feeling very much so like I mean I got this it's the same it's the same thing every day (laughs) right so when God led you to make these moves did you find yourself questioning him having any obstacles or things that crept up? So actually that, that sort of stuff didn't happen until after I had already left, after I had already left, I had already been working. I had started my business, like all of that, like he even told me at the moment, like during the three months I was hanging out at at my job, I'm like, I, at first I was like, I need, I need a prep, I need a prep, I need a prep. And then he was like, no, no, you need to sit down and get mentally prepared for what you're about to do. So I stopped planning. I stopped preparing all that jazz. All I knew is that he said my uh, business name was Ray of Light. And yeah. I was going to start in virtual assistance. And that is that is all that I knew. And then as soon as I left my job, I was led to my mission statement, which is translated over to Ray of Light Concepts. It's Matthews 5.16. And it talks about, you know, you being a light and, you know, you're not going to take a light and put it in a, in a dark corner and cover it up. You're going to put it up, you're going to put it up on a pedestal so that it can shine and illuminate the entire room. So that's what Ray of Light is, is based around. And like I was saying, so I don't, I actually didn't get that until I stopped doing virtual assistance and cause I was being, I was successful in that and, and things were coming pretty easy. And once again, I was left unchallenged. (laughs) So so I paused that in 2018. And that's where, you know, when I started questioning, like, okay, so if I'm not meant to continue doing this, like, what was really up? Because like, now it's now it's just, right. um, I actually, that's where, you know, I just told him, I'm going to keep doing stuff. 
and you just kind of like you just kind of make things happen and then I'll just I'll just try to catch up it wasn't until 2019 that my business um, started to really take shape and I started to really hone in and identify what the purpose of Ray of Light was supposed to be. So before we get to that, just backtracking, for someone that, because you mentioned you started as a virtual assistant, so for someone that is a mom or things of that nature and maybe wanting to do more and they have these skills where they could perhaps go out and be a virtual assistant, where would you recommend that they perhaps start? When I first left, all I knew was that there was stuff that I could do. And I had, I originally just kind of looked at all of the things that I had done in the past. I mean, like I said, I was in healthcare before. Um, I was a CNA. I was a phlebotomist. I was a tax preparer. You know, I've been a server. There's so many different jobs that I have done, so many titles that I have held. So I kind of started out by listing all of those things out and then deciding, okay, I don't want to do this, 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 or this. I don't have time to do this or this because, you know, I have kids and I have a husband and we are still technically newlyweds during all of this. Right. <laughs> We're two years old. Like we right. haven't even <laughs> spoken our first sentence. <laughs> <laughs> So kind of, I went from there and I also went to school for audio engineering. So I took a, a course with a lovely woman named Esther Inman. She is fantastic. She has a business called 90 Day VA. And she, I started off, I was one of the first couple of people in the first couple of rounds that she had. And she's evolved so much. You should really ask her on. She's, she's fantastic too. But I started off in, in her in her course, and she's actually the one who gave me my first client because I had opened up to her. And I wasn't just going to pay you my money and not speak to you. No, ma'am. So right. <laughs> I was on her messenger, and I was, you know, booking calls with her, like making sure I'm on all the calls because... I mean, these are all the things that I have. Like, I, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Now, now here's what I have. Now, what, like, what can I do? Right. And she actually ran into a woman who was a voiceover artist. And she was looking for an assistant who could also help her take the weight of audio editing off of her plate. So it kind of just fit real well. Now, I had it utilized because when I was in school, I realized that I didn't want to mix and master music. I love music. I am... Like, I am a rhythmic person. Right. <laughs> like, I absolutely love music. But, and I thought that, like, me producing music would make, that, that makes sense. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, music's cool. Yeah, I absolutely hated producing music. So I can be a critic. I can give you, I can give you um, helpful tips. I can, like, tell you my honest opinion, those sort of things. But mix it and master it, no, no. I ended up, I ended up like with this, with this education, I didn't know what to do with it. And so it just all lined up so well that she was my first client. So I ended up duplicating her. As soon as I found her, I duplicated her. I became a virtual assistant for voiceover artists and any other creatives. And that, that was, that's what I did. Right. Yeah, and that's important pointing out because so many people have so many skill sets and so many lists of things that they can do. And I like how you just happened upon this client that came to you through this coaching you invested in, and then you narrowed it down and focused on that one thing sort of to begin. And I think so many people pull themselves in so many ways because they're trying to do too many things when they're first starting out. Yeah, yeah, that's why it was it was it was super simple after the initial three months of me pushing, pushing, pushing. So I actually created a list. Once I figured out who my ICA was, I created a list. I went through and I stalked the mess out of anybody who was a voiceover artist. <laughs> and I made myself a very long list. I actually went in one by one, looked over their websites, really decided like whether or not they were a good fit for me, if it made sense for us to at least connect, even if they're not ready for me now, would they be ready for me in the future? So I went through, created a list of over 500 different VO actors and I emailed them one by one. Yeah, I had a semi-template that was rinse and repeat and just change their name. But there was two paragraphs in there that I would be able to go in and say specifically like, no, I'm talking to you. This isn't just 
in right. your type of message. Like, like, this is a spam. I like legit would like to get to know you. And so I think that approach is what made me seem more personable. So I was getting calls and emails and, hey, I wasn't ready then, but now I am, you know, come on, come on. And and I was really blessed to not have to market myself past those that three month push, push, push. Yeah. So you have to do the work and that's really what it boils down to. Cause many people think they start a business, they just put it out here, put it on social media and then the clients and everything will come. And it's just important to show the behind the scenes of there is a certain amount of work that you have to do and pitching and getting in front of your ideal audience, your ideal client and putting yourself out there and bringing them to the greatness that is you pays off in the long run. And I think it's just so much misinformation out here where people think everyone's just going to flock to me because I started this amazing business and everyone's just going to want it. I got a website. Right, I got a website. I have pretty graphics. I have they push the button. They right. push the button and it pays me. Yes. I have social media followers and everyone's just going to come. And I think just pointing out that the people that have reached our success, they did not just get there overnight. There's no overnight success. Yeah. I mean, you may have a viral video, but how many videos were recorded before then? And it's just yeah. how much work goes in behind the scenes before people actually make it in front of the mess. But if you're like enjoying yourself, I my advice would be just to like relax. Like there are times where stuff will look really, really bad. And you just kind of have to breathe through it and then trust, even if you're not a spiritual person, if, even if you don't believe in a specific God, that's okay. Like, just trust and have peace that, like, it's going to work itself out. Focus on the things you can control. And, I mean, I'm spiritual, so I believe that he will lead you. <laughs> yes. I believe that also. And, yeah, just relax and trust the process, as I like to say, because it is a process. And no matter if you stress yourself out, being a spiritual person, we both know that God is going to has the final say in the end anyway. So you might as well just relax and enjoy the journey and see where it takes you. Because yes. from my experience, you get further by following him than trying to do it yourself. Yes, yes. exactly. So tell me more about Ray of Light and how this has evolved and what you're currently doing. I actually started when I, when I stopped doing the virtual assisting, I ended up going into in 2018 just training because I realized there were a lot of people that had that same misconception. They had the misconception that, you know, all I got to do is just put, put my website out there. So me and my sister ended up in an accidental business called the Wright Sisters. And <laughs> We ended up putting on, you know, a, a workshop here locally in Houston. And then I only focused on that in 2018. Once we, once we ran the first one, I was like, okay, great. Like, this is, this is nice. I'll focus on, you know, just training people. Cause I really enjoy being able to help them with those business one-on-one -on -one fundamentals. And since they wanted to talk about their website and since they believed that their website was, you know, I absolutely needed, like that was a part of the workshop series too. Right. But our emphasis was more so on what are you going to do? people what is the impact that you're going to make for these people this this is just your step one so once you how are you going to talk to these people to get these people to actually come to your website so yeah we can talk about how the pretty buttons and oh look at my pretty website but at the right. end of the day you have to really think through what it is that you're going to be offering, what solutions you have, what problems they have, all of that jazz. And I really, really enjoyed that. So that's what I did in 2018 and that's I think that's that was the start of getting to where I am now. Right. So tell me more about what you're doing now with Ray of Light. So Ray of Light Assistance has now is now on pause. We're going to talk to Ray of Light Assistance later on because I do <laughs> believe that that's what he did, virtual assistant. So it's there. Right. It's just, so but we have created a new arm which is Ray of Light Concepts that really focuses and hones in on helping these business owners that have, you know, they're a little bit like me. They got out there and like business started going pretty well. And like now they're kind of at a point where I need to create a better service and I need like my business is a little bit shaky and I need to kind of get 
those things back in order. So how do I do that? And a lot of them in order, like how they, what they, the stresses they usually tell me is, <clears throat> you know, I want to spend more time with my family. I want to be able to like, it's, it's so crazy to me that if I, if I'm not the one there, if I'm not the one doing it, I can't take my hands off of it. Nobody should be in business for themselves and feel that way. Right. So that's what I kind of help them work through. The reason why you are stuck in your business is because you're, you are, you have centered it around yourself. Most of your stuff is in your brain. Nothing is on paper. So you can't, you can't hand it off. Of course, when you gave that task to your assistant, your assistant wasn't able to do it. You, they're not in your head. They don't, they don't know. Right. Then. <laughs> That is so true. And I think a lot of business owners do get caught up in their own head and don't want to relinquish that control. And yes, it's their baby and all, but when you are able to outsource and get some help, it helps to have just those kind of processes and things in place so that someone can take over for you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So to the business owners that are listening out here, just from what Ray is saying, it is okay to get some help and get out of your own head because no one is out here doing it alone. No yeah. one, I mean, even a solopreneur, however you're building your business, you are the face of your business, but guaranteed that there are a lot of team members that are behind the scenes helping to make it all happen. I hope you are enjoying this episode as much as I am. Before we dive back into this great episode, I just wanted to take a moment and answer one of the most frequent questions that I get asked all the time. People are constantly asking me, Lawan, how do you do it all? You're working, running a business, raising a family, you have a podcast, a spouse, a life, and you are just doing all these things. Girl, I need to know, how are you doing it? Well, I'm excited to announce to you that I have put together a signature process for how I get it all done. My course from Overwhelm to Organize, Managing Family, Business, and All Things in Between will finally answer the questions for you as to how I do it all. This course is designed to help you stop being busy, help you figure out work-life balance, how to set boundaries, and get your priorities in order. And we do all of this in this course and so much more. I mean, are you tired of feeling stressed, overwhelmed, and anxious? Are you ready to reduce that overwhelm, minimize the guilt in all areas of your life? And how about that work-life balance thing that is just always there? Are you ready to stop struggling to achieve it and instead find a way to create a plan to become more productive and less busy? Because time is of value and I don't want you wasting any more time spinning your wheels. I put together this course to help you dive through and answer all those questions and come up with your own process to get it all done. That's right. I do this every day. I do it all the time. I would not teach you anything that I have not actively done myself. So if you are ready to go from overwhelmed to organized and finally get things in your life in order and Get your plate a little more balanced out so that you can reach that state of feeling balanced and not just constantly chase after work-life balance. I invite you to head over to my website or click the link in the show notes so that you can get enrolled in the course from Overwhelmed to Organized, Managing Family, Business, and All Things in Between. I can't wait to see you inside the course and take this journey with you. This course is truly life-changing. It is a process that you can use over and over again. And trust me, I wouldn't give you anything that I don't do myself. So believe me, I know it works because here I am on this podcast and doing all the things and I still have my sanity. And best of all, I'm doing all of it without sacrificing my family time. So if that sounds like a plan to you, Hit the link in the show notes or head over to my website and sign up now for my course from Overwhelmed to Organized. Now back to this great episode. Yeah, whether and like, so if you are solo, what I used to do was think of my systems as like my partners, like I'm paying you money so that I can charge for my invoices or so that I can have a website that's functional or so that I can market myself on Facebook. Like 
I am, I like, you're my team. And then once I got a team, because I had already structured out a good amount of stuff, I had already had policies and procedures. And that's one of the, one of the main reasons that Ray of Light assistance, because I had, I put all those things in order. As soon as I saw my ICA, everything with that ICA that I had to do, I made sure that I, I created a template based off of what I had to send them already. So all of my stuff was in place. And so that's what you have to do. You have to make sure that your policies, your procedures are all together. And that way, when you do start getting actual team members, whether they're a contractor or you're like, they're your staff, once you get that actual team there, it's much easier for them to flow into your business. And all of this was identified to me in 2019 when we started to get a major team and I wasn't ready. <laughs> Like Ray of Light Assistance may have been ready for that, right. but Ray of Light Concepts, because Ray of Light Concept was still just the concept. <laughs> right. So in 2019, that's what I focused on was like really figuring out, okay, I'm going to have to lead a team in 2020. So I had a soft launch where I kind of went and got a couple of clients to kind of, you know, shape and mold and pl practice with. So that's what I spent 2019 kind of getting the the, the smaller bones together. And then by the end of 2019, um, my sister and I have planning the final quarter. So I took all that I had done throughout the year, put it together so that that way my full launch in 2020 would go well. And with all that planning, all of my stuff was already virtual. So pivoting when the pandemic happened was like, oh, cool. Yeah, so that's the point about being prepared because so many businesses, so many people were not prepared for this no, virtual I world. I have several that we live clients in. right now, several clients who are freaking out. And I'm like, hey, I got you. We've already talked about, we've already talked about, you know, your services. We've already, we've already, I, I like to keep up with the news. So right. we've been talking about a recession prior to the pandemic. Right. So during a recession, you want to expand your audience. So I was already moving, you know, getting my clients to consider virtual services. It is important to have that virtual model. I mean, just keeping up with the times and how things are changing. I mean, the world is really moving to more virtual things. I mean, it started yeah. with when you pick up the phone, you're not getting a person on the phone anymore. And it's just the natural progression of the world that we live in where technology is really taking over and becoming such a big point that it was almost a natural progression that businesses are going to have to look at how to do things virtually and switch up their models. It's just that yeah, some were yeah. thrown into it a lot sooner than they thought they would be. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But all your pieces are there. You just kind of got to look at your repertoire of, of what's in, what's in your Mary Poppins bag. Like let's right. go digging around in here. Like there's something there that can go virtual. Everyone has something. Definitely. So as a mom, how are you finding that you are managing everything? Because I know you have a new baby and all your other babies and your business. So how are you doing it, mom? So everything is going pretty well. The only adjustment period that we had, because I had already been working from home, was, you know, now instead I have become my daughter's, my daughter's teacher. And I'm not a teacher. So after the initial freak out of, oh, crap, I have to teach my baby. And, you know, which, I mean, when you think about it, like, duh, you should be teaching your child. But that's neither here nor there. My daughter is dyslexic and she has ADHD. Yeah. She got it from me. I'm dyslexic. I have ADHD. So our brains are, they're, they're the same. They have the same problem. But we both kind of figure out problems differently okay. because that's what works for our dyslexia. So I actually, that was about the only, the only flub that we had. Now that doesn't mean that there wasn't a struggle before. When I first left my business, there was a major adjustment period to be honest with you and completely transparent. We, my household didn't start getting into a rhythm until late 2019. And so like, since the whole house was on a rhythm and I, that's, I started talking to them, I was like, you know how on our dance days, like we just be dancing and hanging out and cleaning and, you know, talking and all that jazz and they things kind of just like flow together. You know, they were like, yeah, yeah, that was, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So let's create that, create that everywhere. Like we need rhythm around this house. Right. <laughs> So that that way, if and when something crazy happens, we, it doesn't catch us all off guard. Right. 
fast forward. <laughs> like, like, it was like just in time. <laughs> yes. And so like I that. preach rhythms. I, I definitely, I preach rhythms and, you know, leading a rhythmic lifestyle. And yes, you know, doing the same thing over and over can get tedious and mundane. But that's why I say get into a rhythm. I don't know if you've noticed, but when you're driving around in a car, and like you're on your way home, like you have done all the things, ran all the errands, accomplished all of what you needed to do that day. So you turn the radio on and you start driving down the road. And then all of a sudden you look up and you at home. How you get here? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's because you went into autopilot, you relaxed, you bobbed your head, you got through it. So now when you get home and your daughter is flipping her lid and, oh my God, my book report was due and I can't do it. And, oh my God. Like now instead, like you have that brain power in that space to be like, okay, let's just bring it down to a zero. Like real quick, because you're up here, girl. Come right. down. Right. Down. Let's find a solution. So you have that headspace to deal with that problem and to now apparently write a freaking book report. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's good. And so, to get, yeah, that's good to get into a rhythm because I mean, I think people get caught up in the word schedule and system and those type of things. When you think of it as a rhythm and everything flowing together, that kind of takes the pressure off the term schedule and what people feel living up to a schedule means. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I, I preach rhythms, I try to get my clients to do it in their personal life, because if you're able to do it in your personal life, life is easier to duplicate it over to your business. So I preach rhythms and, you know, making sure that life kind of like you just you just get into the, the flow of things. You get these processes that you're going to have to do for your clients and stuff in a in a rhythm, in a normal routine. So that that way, when you need to turn your attention to your client, your client, like your client now has the 100% best you and you're putting your best foot forward because you've had, you've eliminated the need to think about these tedious and mundane mundane things and you don't feel drained because you've done it in a, in a certain way that speaks to you because what works for me isn't going to work for you but that's how that's that's how I stay zen like girl mm -hmm. find your zen where is it <laughs> <laughs> find your zen I like that <laughs> so what would you say has been the most rewarding part of your life journey so far I think in this season in my life it most certainly is my kids like all of them. I have a teenager who is going through her own little teenage, <laughs> teenage journey. <laughs> and, and like, I'm sitting back and I'm just like, was I, was I, I feel like maybe I was the exact same way. I giggled at a bunch of stuff that like nobody else got but me. <laughs> like, I, like I, I wanted my, like my privacy so I could work through my thoughts and my emotions. Like, it's just, it's just really fun watching all of my kids and they're all in different stages. So I'm looking at my teenager, remembering what it was like for me to be like 13 years old, you know, about to go into high school. Oh man, oh man, what's going to happen there? And then I remember, you know, Alyssa's nine, year, nine years old and she's, she's where I was when I was in elementary school, where it's like, you know, education is the key to success. And like, this is important. And like, for some reason, I'm not getting it, but I want to get it so bad. So like, then I have Alyssa and then you have free spirited little monster over here who's three years old, who was the baby, so spoiled. And he, he is just so confused as to what this little person is. But you know what? At the same time, I want to play with you. Hey, Jace. Hey, Jace. And poking at me. You got Jace. <laughs> <laughs> but he has he has a major a major um personality too that little that little tiny one is the only one of my children who have cooed oh i i didn't have a cooing kid i've never had a kid that coos this little boy is cooing he's two months old he's been cooing since he was two weeks old oh. he is the most angry little baby he, but he also tries to sing with me and he tries to play with me and he smiles, but he will get angry and then, like he's like my grandfather. He will get angry and then snap. <laughs> I want what I want when I want it. Right. Do you want to connect with me before the next episode drops? I invite you to head on over to Instagram and Facebook and follow me and make that connection today. 
You can find me online at More Than a Mother Podcast and also on my business page at Lawan Moses. I can't wait to have you as a part of my friendship community. After all, just like you are more than a mother, you are more than a number and you are more than a follower. We are truly building relationships and connecting on genuine levels. So I can't wait to see you over on Instagram and Facebook. And you can tell, like, he's already holding and supporting his head, and he wants to catch up to the others so bad. He's trying to talk. He's trying to sit up and crawl. Like, boy, just relax. (laughs) Some kids are born with that independent spirit. Trust me, that's how my, she's 10 now, and it doesn't leave for (laughs) <laughs> she started I remember when she went to uh daycare for the she was six weeks old and when I picked her up that first day the daycare teacher said I've never seen a baby that's so mean <laughs> it wasn't that she was mean it's just she didn't want the usual baby stuff like she was I think she cried so much because she wanted to say things and not want people to do stuff for her and she was mad that she couldn't say it so she would just cry all the time like stop doing stuff for me <laughs> Like, like, I can do it. No, you right. can't. You can't even scratch your own eyeball. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's where it came from. Because when that daycare, when the daycare teacher told me that when I picked her up that first day, she's like, I've never seen a child so mean. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. But I mean, just seeing right. her grow and now she's 10. It's just that independent spirit that I'm going to do it myself. I want to do it myself. So yeah. So I'm with you on that yeah. youngest. Yes, I can. Yeah. Everything is that boy is a hoot and a half, but yeah, definitely that's what I'm most proud of right now. And honestly, I, when I first started having kids, I was like, you know, I want to be more than a mother, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't want to just be a mom, right. but like where my business is, where my marriage is, where life in general is, even in the middle of a pandemic, where my relationship with God is like all of that. Like I, am fully just so all around thankful and grateful for everything and how everything is working out and how now it's not perfect but I also see relief at the end I also can kind of get and get a sense that things are going to be different things are going to be better so like I am really just enjoying the little people around me because they are a hoot and a half all of them are crazy (laughs) <laughs> they're all crazy in their own way and here's the thing I can't be mad at them because it's either my genes or my husband's genes right. so it's just like I mean you got it on exactly and that's the thing there are mirrors of us clones of us in one way or another <laughs> but one thing that's great about this time is that it's just bringing back the family and we're able to enjoy those moments and enjoy that time and enjoy everyone around us. So even though the global pandemic is happening, things are crazy. It's helping us to appreciate those little things that I think got lost in the hustle of everyday life. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I am, I am just, I'm, I'm delighted. Like, honestly, until you asked me that question, I hadn't even, I hadn't even realized like, I am, I am real good right now. (laughs) And that's, that's a good place to be. I mean, to be able to say that is such a great thing. And I think that's a place that many people strive to get to. I mean, that's one of the reasons for this more than a mother podcast is to hopefully get to that point where you're looking at, yes, I'm enjoying motherhood. I love everything about being a mother but I'm also feeling fulfilled in all the other areas of my life. I'm living my dreams, going after everything so that I can sit back and say, yes, I'm good. As a whole human being, as a woman, yeah, I am good. Like, all around, all around, tens all around. Like, like I, I have been working really hard to hear and I am very pleased with myself. Like, oh man. Yes. Yeah, I definitely want to copy of this. Like, I was like, this is a memorable moment. Like, yes. when you realize, like, girl, look at, look at, look around. Yeah. Look at God. And I am pleased too, because we met, we haven't told the audience this, but I met Ray and her wonderful sister, Christina, in 2019 through this wonderful apprenticeship program that they have. So we have all grown and evolved together. <laughs> so to sit here today and be doing all this, it's just amazing. So I'm happy for both of us. Yes, yes. I'm so, I'm, I, like I told you before, I am so proud of where you come from being in the apprenticeship to now. 
you have come so far from offering all the things or being able to do all the things and everyone coming to you for all the things to be to getting here to where you know going into the hospital and and you know getting back centered to yourself and then coming back out and this whole podcast the way that it is taken off like the way that you have a following you're you're reaching your audience you're articulating yourself like you're like I am just in awe, and I'm I'm glad that the apprenticeship could have could be in the in the story that yes. helped you get to where you are part of your story. Yes, yes, I'm glad it's part of my story too, and I'm glad that I met both of you. So, all things happen for a reason. If I wasn't doing all the things, I may not have crossed you guys' path. So. No, nope. that's, <laughs> that's why we were like. I mean, it's great that you do all the things, but you gotta, you gotta slow down. Yeah, <laughs> like, and that like, is, yes, that's definitely what I've done. Yeah, so and you be, seem a lot happier. I am. I am really. I'm at peace. Uh, that peace and all. Like I thought I had it before, but once I went through everything in October with the illness and all, it just gives you a whole new outlook on life and. It really makes your loved ones appreciate you more and just those different type of things. So it's really, in my life, we went from my illness from October till I couldn't drive and get back to myself really till February is when I went back to working yeah. full time and able to drive. And then a month later, we had this global pandemic to where you're really appreciating life. So it's just been one constant just evolution for all of us. And I think that we are all like, I can sit back and say we're in a great place right now. So I feel like you with that joy, with that contentment, with that peace, and just knowing that I don't have all the answers right now. But one thing I have learned is that it's all going to work out and it's all moving in the right direction. So I'm just going to keep riding that train and see where yeah, it takes me. Like, do it with a smile. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. And like I said, everything's not beautiful. perfect. Everything's not all together, but I'm following God and wherever that train takes me. And I think that's the point okay. people have to get to is that ultimate surrender. Like whatever your faith source is, oh, if you are a spiritual person, whatever it is, when you get to that place where you can just surrender and be like, okay, life is really out of my control. And if a global pandemic hasn't taught you that life is out of your control, I don't know what else could teach you that. But life's <laughs> I, don't know what right. I don't know what will teach you that. If you can't look at this pandemic and realize that you really have no control in life, then yes. You have to handle that with your person, whoever you answer to. But from our end, just that spiritual being, spiritual person, and know that we just have to follow it wherever it goes, wherever it leads us, and know that we're going to be okay in the end. Yes, focus on what you can control. Yes. (laughs) So what tip or tips would you have to offer to a mom who may be struggling to find her way or trying to manage things in her life and just get to that place of peace in all that we have just discussed? So my main advice would be to find your rhythm, find your balance, find your zen. Where, where are you, where you, where you can, where, where's that safe place where you can stay at peace? Like with all the craziness that's going around, where's that place that you can retreat to? With me, that looks like music. That looks like I woke up this morning and I am just not feeling it. I am going to put on some music. I'm going to put on a little bit of Jill Scott. We're going to listen to Jill Scott. And girl, you're just going to stay calm. And when, yeah, when the kids come and ask you a question, yes, sweetheart, how can I help you? Yes, I love you. Okay, well, we're going to get that in just a second. Like, that's how I can stay. Like, because they didn't do anything. They're just kids. Like, you just asked me for a cookie. Like, what I was like, no, you don't get a cookie. <laughs> So, you know, on, on days like that, and it really getting, staying in those places and being able to really identify with yourself and figure out, okay, what keeps me at peace and just putting more and more emphasis, emphasis on that, that is what is, what is going to start shaping your rhythm so that when life hits you, When the kids, you know, break something or when you decide to start a business while you have a toddler and a two month old and and whatever your story is, like when you have those things happening, the rhythm and finding that Zen place, that place that just keeps you at peace, that that is where your happy place is going to be. And that is where you are able to let go and let God or let go and let ever. But, you know, that is where you're able to let go and let God. 
because you are at that dim place and you're like, you know what? I can't control that. I can't do anything about that. But what I can do is listen to Jill Sky and I can see. And if it's a sleepy day, then you put on upbeat, got to dance around, you know, dance, do a little dance while you're making your coffee. Like you find whatever your rhythm is. Like I said, for me, that's music. Your thing may be different shows. Your thing may be listening to podcasts. Your thing may be to, you know, read a book and, you know, or listening to audio, uh, audio book, like whatever your thing is to keep you centered, because you're not going to get anything done. If you're so scattered, if you're so stressed out, if you're so worried, if you're anxious, that's never going to happen if you have all those negative thoughts. So no matter what's going on, find your zen so you can have some clarity and some brain space so you can start to see things more clear and find your path out of whatever it is that you're in right now. Whatever has you stuck and angry and pissed, and it doesn't just have to be just the pandemic, whatever has you in that state of mind, find your zen so you can find your way out of that dark place. I like that. Find your rhythm and find your zen. So thank you so much, Ray, for joining me today. Can you tell us where can our audience, where can my audience find you online? So I can be found on Facebook. It is, my handle is C. Ray Burrell. All of my handles are C. Ray Burrell, but I spend most of my time on Facebook. You can choose to messenger me between me and my assistant. We watch our messenger. We respond to them. If it's someone who has a personal question for me, then my assistant will let me know. I, I am more than happy to help anyone make it through stuff. I also have some summit information if you're trying to create a business or if you're trying to create, you know, something out of this pandemic. I also have a summit that's coming up that you'll start seeing about. So I would say the best place to reach me right now is on Facebook. Also, and I will be sure to link to that in the show notes so that everyone can easily find you. So yes. thank you again for joining me, Miss Ray. This has been thank such you. a pleasure. Yes, this is great. It was so much fun. I'm so glad that I got to share my story with everyone. And yes, I'm glad that you were here and able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, head over to LawanMoses.com. I love for us to stay in touch. Make sure you leave your email address so I can send you inspiration, tips, and the latest updates. Or if you prefer, text the word MORE, that's M-O-R-E, to 302-440-4632. We have some great things coming up and I don't want you to miss a thing. Thanks again. Make sure you subscribe and leave a review. Until next time, keep pressing because victory is yours.